Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is a Friday, the, 6th, the 15th, the 15th of October. Friday, October 15th is a halfway through the month of October. And so we give God thanks for granting us grace to see another day, uh, a gift of a new day. And uh, we, we want to entrust our day to him and all that this day holds. So we don't know what this day holds for us, but he does. And so we, we, we entrust the day into his hands, uh, our, our tasks, our, our, our actions, and our decisions today into the hands of our God and Savior. So let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the sea and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah on the day at Massah in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me and put me to the proof, though they, hadn't, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Fear not. Oh, not fear not. It's a different one today. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Let's say the, 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 the Benedictus, the refrain. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, 
holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. And our collect for today. Gracious Father, you give up your son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Savior's blood. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our psalm this morning is Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Psalm 139. The refrain, search me out, O God, and know my heart. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my, rest, my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. There is not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You encompass me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go, then, from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are also there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, even darkness is no darkness with you. The night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light are to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. My soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished. Already in your book were all my members written. As day by day they were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How deep are your counsels to me, O God! How great is the sum of them. If I count them, they are more in number than the sand. And at the end, I am still in your presence. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O oh God, that the bloodthirsty might depart from me. They speak against you with wicked intent. Your enemies take up your name for evil. 
Do I not oppose those who, Lord, who oppose you? Do I not abhor those who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred. They have become my own enemies too. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and examine my thoughts. See if there is any way of wickedness in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. And the prayer. Creator God, may every breath we take be for your glory. May every footstep show you as our way, that trusting in your presence in this world, we may beyond this life still be with you where you are alive and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A great psalm, Psalm 139, is a psalm of God's, um, what I call, the omnis, the omnis of God, God's omnipotence, God's power, God's all power, omnipotence, God's omniscient, God's knowledge, all knowledge, God knows everything, we can't hide anything from God. Um, yeah, I think those are the two that are here, God's, um, God's knowledge, God's the fact that God knows me inside and out more than I even know myself. And God is the powerful creator who, who created me, knit me together in my mother's womb. Let's say the poetic language of the psalm. God, you know, those who do embroidery or those who knit, um, you know, God is knitting every every bit of me, of us, in our mother's womb. He, which means he's, he's carefully putting every bit together um, with skill and craft and care, just like any person who knits, you know, who makes the sweater, knitting, it, it is done with, with precision and care and so on. That's how God created us, the psalm says, um, in our mother's womb. And um, every part of us um, was formed by God, the, the all-powerful the all powerful one. Um, as, and, and I love verse 15 and 16. Your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished. Already in your book were all my members written. In other words, before I was even completely formed in my mother's womb, God already saw me as a full-grown man. <laughs> Every part of me was already written down. You know, God's, God has a master plan for me before he actually created me. Um... It was already written down. And verse 16, as day by day they were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Isn't that amazing? Even before any part of me existed, God fashioned every bit of me day by day in his book, in his plan, in his grand plan for my life, the psalmist is saying. It's an it's amazing meditation on God's awesomeness and the fact that God has every aspect of our lives in control in his hands and of course the last bit that people don't like very much is the, the bit about um, the hatred for those who hate God well it, it is understandable when people in our culture don't like to talk about hate but um, but if we love what God loves, we must also hate what God hates. And um, we cannot love what God hates if we love what God loves. And, and, um, and that's basically the point of that bit of the psalmist. Um, we must develop a hatred for the thing that God hates. And many Christians don't understand what that means because we, for us, love is not 
it is not the kind of love that God has. Love for us is sentimentality. And so everything is, uh, is, is to be loved. But that's not this God of the scriptures, sisters and brothers. There are some things that God do not love. And um, anyway, let's leave that there. Let's move to our New Testament reading, which is uh, uh, John chapter 14. Because if we don't, we never get to it this morning. The time is racing ahead. John chapter 14, from verse 1 to 14. John chapter 14, 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you, if you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you know that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not my own, are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father speak living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Amen. What an amazing promise, isn't it? Um, you may ask anything in my name, and I will do it. But of course, um, the qualification for that is, um, is, is knowing who Jesus is truly is. Later on, he's going to say, the reason we can ask anything in his name and he will do it is because, is when, is, is, is when we abide in him and obey his commands. There's always a qualification. It's uh, your, it, it, when you are in Christ and when Christ and God is your main focus, the things you ask will be um, based on the things that God wants for us. The desire of God's heart will become our desires as well. And so in those circumstances, when we ask anything in his name, he will do it because what we are asking for uh, is, in, uh, is, is compatible with what he wants for us. And that's, and that's when our spirit and God's spirit are perfectly in tune. Um, but other times, because of our own self-centeredness and our own selfish nature, we ask all sorts of things that we don't get because we are not in sync with God. Um, it begins with those amazingly comforting words that Jesus gives us. Remember, this is all part of the upper room teaching, the very last night of Jesus's um, existence on this earth, uh, before his crucifixion, that is. Um, and, um, and he's teaching his disciples. 
And he's telling them, he said, do not let your hearts be troubled. He's already told them that he's going to die. And remember, Peter said, I will die with you. And he said, you are going to betray me. So let's, let's get that out of the way first. Um, but he said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. Which is another way of just saying, Jesus is saying, trust. If you trust in God, then trust in me. It's, it's, God's, it's Jesus' way of identifying himself with God. The trust in me is a trust in God. Um, you, if you say you trust in God, then trust in me. Trust my words because they are God's words. And that's what he explained early, later on when he said, what I say is what the Father gives me because Father, the Father is in me and I am in the Father and so on. What, I do nothing that is not from the Father. And so if you trust God, trust me because I am God. And, and, and I am equal with God, he says, in, in such, in so many words, really. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I am going there to prepare a place for you. Now, where was Jesus going? Jesus was going to the cross. Uh, you know, sometimes we think he was going to heaven. No, he wasn't going to heaven. He was going to the cross. And it is at the cross that he's going to prepare a place for you and I. Uh, in my father's house are many dwelling places, so there's a, many rooms, many places to rest, many places you can call home. Uh, in my father's, in my father's, in my father's house are many places, and I am going there to prepare one for you. And um, and 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 of course. We read this as funerals because it is comforting to, re because Jesus is saying in my death, because I'm going to the cross, in my death, I am going to prepare a place for when you are ready to come and follow me. Um, in, he says, at the cross, Jesus is preparing a place for us. And Jesus prepared a place for us in the Father's, in the Father's home, in the Father's um, house, as it were, which is heaven. Heaven is the where the Father lives, isn't it? The Father's house is heaven. Jesus said, at the cross, when I die, I am going to prepare a place for you so that you can enter into the Father's house and have your quarters, <laughs> your room in, that, in God's house. Uh, and so he says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that where I am, you may be also. Uh, I am going to prepare the place for you, but I will return to take you to be. In other words, you are not going to enter this place by yourself. I am going to come, as it were, take you by the hand and lead you into the Father's, into your new home. And that, sisters and brothers, is the comfort of this great text that we read at funerals. Because Jesus is promising us that, that when he died, he's going to prepare a place for us in God's, in God's house, in heaven. But he's not just going to leave us to come on our own. He's going to return and take us and carry us home, as it were. And that is comforting. It means, sisters and brothers, that our, on the moment of our death, Jesus comes and take us home. Jesus comes and lead us to our home where the Father lives. And so we don't need to fear. We don't need to fear death because Jesus is leading us home. And that is the amazing truth of this text. Let's, let's finish there. There's lots more, but we don't have time. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we... We are thankful <clears throat> for your death because at, you, on, on, at the cross, you prepare a place for us in your father's house. And so, Lord, now we have a home in heaven um, where we, uh, as Peter says, that uh, an inheritance kept in heaven for us that can never spoil or fade. 
And so, Lord, it is because of your death why we have hope. In fact, because you died, we shall never die. Because, Lord, you die in our death, you lead us home into the whole, the, the presence of the Father. And so, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this blessed assurance, for this truth that may that may this truth sink deep into our souls today. That whatever we face today, it cannot be any worse than death. And death is just a way to come home. Because you come and you take us by the hand and you lead us home. Thank you, Lord, for this blessed assurance that nothing in this world can take you away from us. Thank you. Help us, O oh God, to believe this, to believe your words as the words from God, to trust your words as God's words. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This morning in our, in our prayers, we are praying for, um, on our electoral law, we are praying for Joyce, Joyce Lindsay. Joyce Lindsay, we saw Joyce yesterday at a funeral at the church. And so we pray for Joyce and um, we pray for, uh, pray Lord that you will be with Joyce today. Uh, if she's at work or if she's at home, wherever she is in her travels, we ask Lord that you'll strengthen her, strengthen her in body, mind and spirit, strengthen her faith. Uh, Lord, we pray. We pray for her family. We pray for the whole family. We pray um, for, 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 for the for the girls and and the, the the grandchildren, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray especially um, for Amy. Uh, and, and Lord, we we ask for your mercy upon that family. Lord, hear our prayer for them today. We pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And uh, we pray this morning for those who live on Suffolk Road, uh, Suffolk Road in our parish. And uh, so, Lord, we ask for your mercy and grace for all those who live on Suffolk Road. We pray especially for those who don't know Jesus who live on Suffolk Road. And we pray for them this morning. And we ask, Lord, that you would penetrate through the darkness with your light through the closed doors and closed hearts. We ask, Lord, for you to penetrate into that uh, space with your love, with your mercy, so that those who don't know Jesus may come to know him before the final bell tolls. And so, Lord, hear us, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And uh, we continue to pray for others who are on our prayer list today. We, we remember um, Keith and, uh, and, 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 and Ken and Deanne and Stafford and Doreen and Pauline and Veronica and Dolly. And also, we, we want to remember Jane Lindsay. Jane uh, was the name I, I was trying to remember there. Um, we, we want to continue to pray for Jane Lindsay as she, um, by God's grace, we pray that God will have mercy on her and bring healing, healing to her body. And so, Lord, hear our prayer for these who are not well. Lord, we entrust them to you with various degrees of sickness. Lord, hear our prayer for these, your children. Lord, have mercy on them and bring healing, bring your grace of healing and strength to their bodies. And we pray for them this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's just say St. Patrick's prayer. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, 
Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and his all-sufficient grace to sustain you today, sisters and brothers, in whatever you're doing, wherever you're going. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, sisters and brothers.